Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. For today's video we're going to be talking about the modality called qi ni zhang or CNT for ease. <laughs> um, I really really absolutely adore this modality. I've been doing it since 2017 so it's been quite a long time that I've been practicing it and even for myself as a practitioner to see how the practice changes and develops and deepens within the work and seeing how that um, experience I gain and energy practice that I've developed further and deeper, how that transmits through to the student or the practitioner, sorry, or the client, but I like to call them students because obviously we're trying to train them, empower them um, and helping them learn about how to look after themselves better. Um. Yes, so it is one of those modalities that 10 sessions at minimum are required to really see a powerful transformation. I find it difficult because um, in any of the work that I do, it's almost trying to say, you know, it feels like you're almost kind of working with the sales pitch or sales tactic. But of course, when I first trained in it, I thought mm, that's quite, you know, that's quite a lot of sessions to ask for. Uh, and obviously, when I did my training and saw the evolution, the transformation of an individual from A to B, it really, you know, blew my mind, really, and there's no better way to say it. And obviously, with multiple people to see, you know, career development, choice, uh, choices change, habits change, um, relationships improve or leaving certain relationships, choosing to do different career paths. Um, people starting to say that they really have never known who they truly were until, you know, they've come to this practice and sort of finding who they are and just finding their inner self and starting to do or live through their purpose or even discover their purpose or people very, very sick with ill health, terminal illness, or just general not feeling well, generally not feeling well to starting to come to find themselves and getting better and recovering after you know constantly trying to do things but never really getting there and it's a modality that really encompasses everything it can be physical work can be emotional work can be spiritual practice um, and I really enjoy it as well because it's a practice that you can actually give homework and homework that makes you feel good and almost one of those things that when you don't do your homework um, you really do notice the differences and what the key difference, I would say, because obviously I do quite a wide range of modalities and I sort of was counting the other day, I do an excess of 50 modalities and still counting. Um, it's one that for us as practitioners, we have to keep doing work ourselves. So it's a constant homework for us. And I think this is what gives the edge or the difference compared to other energy practices. It's sort of you go there, you learn something, you leave the course and you just keep doing it with people. Whereas this one is a almost like a flower that's constantly blossoming um, and then you nurture it and then you grow a new flower and that one blossoms. And then all of a sudden your practice is deepen. And I think that's in a sense what niches me or gives me the edge over other practices because we can do much deeper work you know and that's why it's classed as psychic surgery because we're not working just on a surface layer of energy I always think of it like a multi-layered cake we're really going deeper 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 and then we can really dig in and get out those deeper blockages um that can be hiding um yeah so it's quite it's quite a powerful journey so um typically speaking in this video of course for the purposes of ASMR, we're doing um, an engagement where we're talking and we're exchanging. But in when you come in for a real session, you know, the setting's completely different in the sense the lights are off, lots of uh, rituals are performed, candles are lit, different smells are activated, working with different um, aromatherapies, different oils. And then we go very, very deep and also when uh, we go into sort of a state of silence and meditation as well, then the work, and especially with the music and the chants and the mantras going on as well, can really get in very, very deep. And it's almost like a hypnotic um, experience or trance-like experience. So we go into this big bubble 
and then sort of at the end of the session we come out of it and feels like we've gone through a journey and then sort of when you leave the space you can really feel the contrast I always say oh yeah you know be careful when you leave the bubble you really can feel the contrast of where you were in an almost this protective womb that's been guarded and space being safely held to work and extract and then you leave and then sort of the energies are recalibrating after having removed out these blockages um to just give you a really smooth path you know and more direction and guidance um when you didn't really have that so it's really good um and I think that where it comes with the aspects that you know they can I, I can do talk therapy you know can help with mentoring guidance life decisions um a really good soundboard as well so then you can bounce off ideas as well and just sort of having someone on your side like a coach a referee a teacher um and then they can help you with better paths so this is just a snippet of what a session would look like for purposes of this video. It's really good for ASMR and to relax and help. Um, but I think if you open to it, if you're in the country, uh, wherever I am in the world at the time, you're really good to come for a real um, in-life session, in-person session um, to see how profound this work can be. And especially if you're someone that has been to many practitioners, tried many things, but you still feel something innately is wrong or don't feel like things in life are going well. Um, this, I would say, is the therapy for you. I really, really love it. And again, just repeating, we mix in traditional Chinese medicines. So I'll be checking the pulses, the uh, diagnosis of the eyes, the tongue, um, different pulses throughout the body. I'll be working on the ab abdominal work. So I'm going to basically be repositioning the major organs. I'm going to be working energetically. So to remove out all the traumas or the energy blockages, then I'm going to be working on the organs and then I'll be recharging them with energy and converting any negative energies that are residing within them and then stabilizing you, grounding you. And if needed, then I will also do different practices um, depending on the need of the individual, really specific practices. If you have certain pains or traumas in the body and almost imagining it being like a bit of chiropractic work or uh, shiatsu or bodywork therapy, that's very physical. Um, and then, yeah, then sort of stabilizing it with lymphatics as well. So just removing all the lymphs that are built up so the toxins in your body that are sort of being transported that need to be eliminated so so we're supporting that process um or fast tracking it because sometimes people's um toxins or lymphs get blocked in their body so we're just shifting all of that that can help you to support better elimination and getting up more toxins from your body so it's a really tricky one because it's all encompassing but i would say it's more of a bodywork practical modality working physically on you um but encompasses you know seeing the health imbalances from a chinese medicine doctor perspective doing energetic work physical work chiropractic bone doctor kind of work um so yes yeah, so i'm not really sure which category you would class it into but i'll say it's an all-in-one um and it's very versatile because then it can flow with the individual of what it's needed so then it goes from being a generic sequence or protocol to a very customized one as well so i hope you guys enjoy the video of course because it's in my my clinic my space i have lots of uh, different modalities surrounding in the clinic so I always bring in different elements maybe aspects of sound or homeopathy or emotional stress um releasing techniques but again this is just from a perspective of one individual who doesn't actually have many issues right um but of course when you are an individual with lots of issues then the uh, modality will be adapted respectively and that's what comes with the background with me having so many uh, skills in my toolbox so yes if you like this video please tell me what it is you liked about it. If you have certain issues, please also drop a comment, maybe and ask, maybe this is something that can be addressed through this modality, or I could even suggest different modalities that might be helpful for you. Um, yeah, and if you 
and I forget sometimes because of the use of my language maybe I'll say terms that might not be understood or are complicated um, and you just want me to elaborate on that also let me know enjoy the video guys so today so this is one of my favorite treatments <laughs> and I probably say that about everyone when you come here <laughs> disclaimer but um <laughs> In terms of if I can categorize, because I can really put my services into specific categories, you know, aesthetics, diet, nutrition, blah, blah, blah. In terms of energy work, I really, really love this because it's very powerful. But to you, it's subtle. Okay. But changes and shifts can happen. So it's called Qi Ni Zhang. So I put it in layman's term, it's Chinese spiritual practices. And they call that Taoist practices. And they say, and this also ties in with Western understanding, like everything starts from the gut. And their practice in this practice specifically, they say our five major organs of our body dictate our life. And without one, we wouldn't be able to survive properly. So what are our five major organs? We're thinking our lungs, we're thinking our heart, we're thinking our liver, thinking our stomach, and we're thinking our kidneys, right? And... Another philosophy which I really resonate with is they say to people, whenever people come for healing, they're like, you've got negative energy, I'm going to take it and remove it. Then I think to myself, okay, then what's left? You know, we don't know, right? Because people take it, they remove it. But in this philosophy, they say, okay, rather than lose this resource of negative energy, why don't we take it and then transform it into positive energy? So rather than removing it and then filling the hole or the void, we're gonna transform it so it can even be even more abundant. So then we start to, or well, I, sort of how I've sort of turned it into my head or changed my belief system, like, right, so maybe having negative energy is not such a bad thing because now we can fuel it to make even more power in our body and transform it, right? <laughs> so it's quite good. So how this works is we start and we do an abdominal what you will feel is a abdominal, abdominal massage. So I work on the small intestine, large intestine, but at the same time, I'm doing a lot of energy work. So in their philosophy, um, they say that a lot of trauma is stored in our small intestines. So that's why we'll get a lot of gut issues, malabsorption, because everything happens and we shut down. So by freeing it, it's like I envision we like opening up this treasure chest and we just transforming, transforming. According to their philosophy, and obviously because when I studied, they said everyone has to come for 10 sessions. So I said, well, you know, that's a good business model, <laughs> right? <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. But now having done it, I can see why. Oh, okay. It really, really does trigger transformation and change. So it's always powerful to come in here and thinking about, you know, anything in your life. What would you like to shift? Mm. You know, is that relationship? Is that career? Is that just being more in tune with yourself, knowing what you want? Um, I've seen very many various things. And when I see and finish the journey with people, it's like they're a new person. So it can be quite profound and even on a physical level, much better. Um, so that's where I trust the energy goes where it needs to. But obviously with my work and experience, I'll try and shift it and move it. Um, so because this is also a Chinese modality, we work as well with um, energy work and Chinese medicine skills. So I'll check your pulses, I'll check your tongue, your eyes. Then we'll move into energy work. Or, or actually, let me backtrack. We'll also work with pulses. So I'll check. You have your main pulse here, your aortic pulse in your belly. Oh, yeah. belly. <laughs> in your belly. So if I push, I won't push hard now, but when I do, you'll have a pulse that's running up here. So people don't know this, but I didn't either till I studied it. So your pulse should be obviously a good regular beat. Yeah. But if you have any injury imbalance, and maybe you might because you carry stuff on one side all the time. Yeah. You have pulses in your wrists, your intercubical fossa, your armpit, your carotid arteries, your temples, under your knees, your groin, your ankles. In theory, they should all resonate and beat at the same frequent rhythm at the same rhythm but due to injury illness whatever they can be out of sync and that can be causing problems because then your cardiovascular system's like i don't know what to do 
All right, so we're just mm -hmm. going to try and harmonize it. So if, you, I always say to people, if you find me lurking somewhere a bit longer, <laughs> that's because there's a problem, right? Right. <laughs> Which I'm going to try to bring back into balance. And sometimes that can take a couple of sessions or can be immediate. Um, and then obviously I keep notes and then obviously in future sessions I'll just revisit and see. And then if you, just for example, if I'm there for two minutes last time and then I'm there for 10 seconds next time, that you should soon. You know it's good. Yeah, that's a good sign, right? And sometimes people's um, pulses can just be very weak, can't even find them. I think so. mine is quite weak, I've been told before. Yeah, that's, I felt that, that's why I pointed oh. that out as well. So, oh. like, I don't so I might have to squeeze harder. Okay. Um, or I'll even tap into my own pulse if, if you need some help. <laughs> if you need a friend, I will be there. Yeah. Um, and then, yes, so then I will obviously go into energy work. So work with the major organs. So I say to everyone, because it's the best known one, is like Reiki, energy healing. But I always say this level of work is much deeper, but no one can really see it because it's a thing that you feel and a, an experience you witness as shifts happen into your life. Um, then, because I've tailored it to my own, <laughs> um, I will then also maybe do some sound ball. I was making a joke in my head before you came here. I was like, you're just going to always come here for the sound ball. Honestly, <laughs> Anyone coming sound here ball. is going to get the sound ball. <laughs> the I love thing. the sound ball. It's very, a very close connection with that ball. Um, and then sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. But for the session, your belly will be exposed. But then at the end, I will likely take your hands and place them over your belly button or between your pubic bone and your navel, what's called your dentin. So it's the place where they say like all your energy, like a cauldron will manifest there and spin and turn. And we want to sort of put your hand on there. So while I've cleaned you, then you can really just supercharge it or burn away any energies, that kind of thing. So I always say it's good at night when you sleep to always cover the area and sort of, I sleep like this, <laughs> like the dead, but yeah. So it's very good. And I always tell people, use your right hand first. It's because it's a more dominant hand, so energy usually comes more. So interesting. Yeah. I feel like I was doing it anyway. So weird. Yeah, but it's an unconscious thing because yeah. people always know. Like when I'm nervous, I do it a lot, I think. Yeah. yeah. So it's just sort of holding your energy. But then if you go into Western ide ideologies, they'll say body language. People's like, oh, because your navel is the place of birth. So this is your most vulnerable spot. So you want to cover up to not show you're vulnerable. Um, but the umbilical cord is the thing that gave you life. It fed you. Right. So, so it's the place to protect. Right. Because mm -hmm. if that was taken away, you would have no life. So it's your place of vulnerability. So we tend to protect it. So you can see when people do speeches, they'll always sit here. Yeah. And they say it's typically men that will do that. They'll cover up <laughs> their pina colada. Because they just feel, <laughs> that's how I call it as well, so it's PG-13. <laughs> but that's basically what they do, is they just cover it up. Um, it's so hard not to laugh. It's good, it's therapy. <laughs> laugh, my darling. Um, but yeah, so they will, they will cover it up. And women will tend to do this as well, because they're covering up here, mm. closing up body language. And that's so true. I do that a lot, actually. But then sometimes I think to myself, I'm just doing this because it's comfortable. It's really comfy. And I'm <laughs> and sure some guys do this as well. So. And then I think, oh gosh, does it sound like I'm shutting myself off? So I was like, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and the last one I always remember when I was trained in body language as well. It's like if people do this when they do speeches, it's a sign of arrogance. Really? I don't know why, but that's what they said. So then I was like, and so... <laughs> Yeah, like, what are you going to do? Is that a correct answer then? No. Yeah, it's like... Yeah. Just stand like a, a robot, <laughs> apparently, yeah. Yeah, no, so uh, basically the people on stage are masters at it. They've, like, been trained to the T, where to walk, how to walk, how fast to walk. It's like a dance routine. It is, basically. Because yeah. I want to do TED Talks, but so I've read a lot of books and gone on, like, watched people on stages, yeah. and it's just, like... It's like an acting career with some inspirational text involved it's quite good anyway sidebar yeah so <laughs> interesting okay so then the last one uh, or the first activity what we'll do is you'll have your hands at your side and I'll expose your belly and when we go into it I'm going to ask you to take nice deep breaths okay. and then I'm going to push into different parts maybe about eight nine times I always forget the number 
but okay. in your dentin I'll push and then around your navel because what that's going to do is help give me an understanding if there's any pressure or imbalance in different parts of your body okay and then now coming back to my personalized touch we're going to add some back flowers so what is happening this week that I could pull something out from Holistic Mama's box? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, so, like, with the flowers, actually, like, I don't remember the original explanation for them. So, is it that, like, it, it depending on what I'm feeling, they match? And yes. Or... So, basically, Dr. Back, who put his name on it, um, was able to extract from flowers different essences. So he's made a batch of 40 different flavors and each one will address a certain emotional imbalance. Okay. So because I know what they all mean, then you tell me and then I'll bring it to you. But then sometimes I can also intuitively well, bring. So actually, I don't know if it's emotional though. Like, I since this weekend and then this week, I've just had like the biggest appetite ever. Mm -hmm. And like, been in this like extreme state of like indulgence mm -hmm. and like today I've suddenly sort of thought like it suddenly feels like it's calming down a little bit and I've been eating a lot less today which is good because of this but I don't know I just felt like too much of everything was happening okay but in that I was being very kind to myself but that's good <laughs> right I really got one for you <laughs> all right I just have to get it. Yeah. Let's see. Do you think you've been pushing yourself too much recently, doing a lot? Because sometimes the hunger mm. can come that you've expended a lot of energy. It could be. I definitely have been doing a lot. Like, I'm enjoying it, so I don't notice when I'm tired that easily, but it could be a way of my body telling me I'm tired. It's like, slow down. Yeah. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, endurance. So we'll put oak in there as well. All right. So I'll give you a bunch of them. So self-acceptance. Feeling okay in your body. Mm -hmm. Not feeling judgmental about it, right? Oh, mm -hmm. is it too much? I'm eating too. So just, just be, right? Okay. Then we could go with different schools of thought that maybe because you're doing too much, it's a word I use, but some, it has a bit of a negative connotation. It's disassociation. So you can be leaving your body. And we just want to bring you back just to calm you and ground you. Because sometimes when you're floating, then you need to eat a lot more because we eat a lot more root, earthy foods, meats, vegetables. Because they call them grounding foods because they come from the earth. So you mm. can feel more connected in your body. Oak is for endurance as well. Like you're just pushing, 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 doing a lot. That your body doesn't always can cannot always keep up. I'm feeling more confident in it, right? Being more brave and standing out and not worrying. I can, I can always tell when I resonate with something when it sits uncomfortably. Okay. <laughs> I hear the word confidence, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some of that. Okay, <laughs> so just lift your tongue for me. I'll just do two because there's a bunch here. With what I've shared now, is there anything specific you think intention-wise that you'd like to work on part of this journey? I was really struggling with that because my brain instantly went to, ah, oh, let's improve career stuff, which is probably not... No, it's totally a thing because if you think about it, I mean, I don't know the actual statistic because everyone's different, but a huge amount of our life is spent in career something you attend every day so I mean I was a chartered accountant I hated my career so mm. I moved into this mm. right no I'm happy so I think it's very important so okay. self-acceptance oh, confidence <laughs> then yeah the first thing that came to mind was kind of professional progression and exploring things out there mm. okay so let's work on that, right? So I'm going to just invite you to put your hand at the side. And I'm just going to lift this a bit as well. So I'm just going to connect with your body first. 
Just you can, like you can, you can, yeah. But like I said, we're going to do one more exercise that will be an engagement exercise where you'll give me numbers out of 10. Okay. So just inviting you to take a nice deep breath in through your belly. And just giving yourself the permission to unwind from a long day. Maybe you're already bringing in that energy of where would you like to be coming from in the future? Can I clear some energy? Like where would you want to be rushing from? Or even which city you'd be rushing from to come for a treatment. I find the power in visualization is very strong. If you can envision it, maybe make a portrait or a wishing board, you'd be surprised what can come true. Okay, so I'm going to invite you to take a nice deep breath in and as you exhale I'm going to insert my thumb and then you will give me a number out of 10, 10 being excruciating pain or 0 being I don't feel anything except just your thumb in my belly. 4, Four. okay. You can change the numbers if you do. Okay, yeah. do. Okay. Let's compare it. Yeah, take a nice deep breath in. again. Three. Three. Don't worry, there's no right or wrong answer. <laughs> okay, and then again. Self-doubt. Self-acceptance. <laughs> laughing therapy today. That's a one. Perfect. Yeah. And again, obviously with progressed sessions, we hope to get the numbers down because you'll be in more balance. Mm. Okay, give me a number. Four, seven, 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 seven. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, four more. Nice deep breath in. Pulse is very good, by the way. Take a nice deep breath in. Yeah, just like that. Seven. Seven. Okay. Second last one. Five. Five. Okay. And last one. So we notice some issues here and here. Okay. Just gonna ask you to stick your tongue out for me. This way I'm looking. Okay, okay, go back inside. You're just gonna look your eyes open, look down. Again, look down. Okay, look left. Look right. Now look up. So again, I'm going to work on the abdomen. Typically people fall asleep. I will be watching you the whole time, <laughs> like a creepy person, but in a good way. <laughs> so if I see you flinch or even energetically I pick up something, I will reduce the pressure or work around it, okay? Thank you. But you can also communicate that to me if you feel. Okay. 
Okay, so now we can just go into it again. Just a reminder, if I cough or even I might spit in a glass, it's because I'm removing energy here, yeah. so yeah. it's normal. Yeah, I was a bit worried about the massage part, but it feels nice. If you go to different places, they hurt you, but... I like nurturing and nourishment and compassion, but sometimes it can be, but every session it gets easier, so it was tight, yeah. digested the shoes. Lovely. <laughs> it's so weird because like people just don't usually touch the stomach area, mm. it feels so weird having someone touch it. Mm. And it's basically what I do all day. <laughs> So when I go into personal life, everyone's like, that's a bit forward to ask me, and I'm like, sorry. <laughs> I can feel something like, mm. it feels like it's getting less tense. Mm. That's really nice. Focusing more on small intestine at the moment. And then when I start working on the outside of your abdomen, then I'll be working on that large intestine. Some people also call this therapy psychic surgery, just being able to go into the body on an energetic level and remove things. Many people have heard of Chi Chi Ne San, mm -hmm. so 
I just call it CMT. But yeah, mm -hmm. you can call it that if you want to call it psychic surgery. It is known as that. But I don't really sell it as that because it can scare people off. It does sound a bit scary. Surgery sounds like you're going to be cutting me up. <laughs> you can do it energetically. It's quite cool. But only if you have some really deep-rooted problems. But on a, overall, mm -hmm. me tuning into your energy, and this is before I actually touch, but I think of stomach and I think kidneys. Stomach and what, sorry? Kidneys. Oh, so okay. thinking about digestive, and maybe, as you've said now anyway, because you've been eating a lot more than you used to, so there's a lot more pressure on your belly um, than it's used to. So digestion, sort of just trying to adjust to change. And then kidneys, um, because it's all about energy. So maybe you've been ex ex using more energy, exerting more energy out in your body. Just it's just adjusting to it. So that's about it. I had so much food yesterday. It was so so good. It's so bad. Reward yourself sometimes. Small pleasures in life. It's tight as well. If you feel like the pain can be, it's a little bit painful, just tune into your breath. come for the um, 10 sessions, mm. how like far apart are they meant to be? The best I would say is weekly, okay. maximum three weeks. Is juicy. Exercise. Are you, are you exercising? Mm, not really. Yeah, so what I'm feeling here is your lymphatics. So little nodules that are building up with your toxins that need to escape, but exercise helps flush them out. Mm. Yeah, I think the only exercise I'm doing is commuting, which isn't much. It's better than nothing, right? It is. 
in the days where if I ever very rarely get to work from home, I do like 10 steps, I swear. I just don't move. I'm very good at not moving. So you have sloth-like energy? I have such sloth energy. I'd be so happy if I could lie in bed all day and do nothing. In fact, that's what I do some weekends. <laughs> Good life. Says you who's doing everything at the moment, isn't it? I know, I'm like forcing myself to do the opposite of what I used to do as well. Your body's like, I'm not used to these conditions. I know. I'm gonna go a bit deeper. I'm just going to put this a little bit lower and I'm going to work on a large intestine. So it might be a bit more blocked for you because we've been eating a lot more. Liver. Did you drink on the weekend or no? Um, did I drink? Um, no, no. Shouldn't hurt like this will be a sensitive, so it means there's an imbalance here in the liver. I can't think of anything last week. Maybe oily foods? Yes. It can be quite hard on the liver to process fats and oil. Very spicy food yesterday. Oh, yeah, okay, maybe. <laughs> spicy foods don't always agree with the body. I didn't agree with my mouth either, it was so spicy. <laughs> we had food the other day with a bit of chilli on and it was violent, it was so bad, we were like... Oh. It didn't even say spicy on the menu <laughs> when I ordered it. It was spinach, I was like, how can spinach curry be spicy? <laughs> I'm a bit vulgar now, I'm like, is it white person yeah. one chilli or is <laughs> it like three chilies? <laughs> they do those rankings and you're like, is this for a white person or someone that can actually handle spice? <laughs> The same for Nando's food as well, like, because they will use the same brush of like extra hot if you um, order lemon and herb. It's like, that's not lemon and herb. You know, I've never actually gone spicy at Nando's ever. Mm. I've only gone for like barbecue. Oh, yeah. Something like Safe. That. Yeah. <laughs> Need to enjoy your meal. It's going to come a bit lower, just so we can really target the rectum, so you might hear some digestion like we are now. And I'm going to take a nice deep breath in, and I'm going to push down, okay? Again, two breath in.
Ну, блин, From your pulses, I don't know what this is, but yeah, I'll say it because we're on one of the I pick up your um, heart, beating quite fast. Your gallbladder, and then your kidneys are a bit weak. Okay. So yeah, so I think it's tying in with this, this gallbladder here. Mm. Just check the other side. Pretty much all your pulses today. So your stomach is down. Mm. It needs needs more energy. Kidneys down, and then yeah. Also lungs. So lungs, heart, gallbladder, kidneys, stomach. It's okay. You're starting somewhere, right? Yeah. Which is the shoulder you always carry stuff on? Is it this one? I mean, kind of both, because I have my bag on the left, my, my main bag with the MacBook and stuff, and the tripod's on the right. Okay. What's more heavy? Um, probably the tripod, so this, this hand. No one ever touches your own pet. <laughs> Rather than stomach. It's so tense, oh my god. Yeah. yeah. I'm struggling to find your pulse. So that's why I asked these questions. Trisha's a bit blocked. Irregular. That's good. No, irregular. Not good. Wait, they're irregular? Yeah, this one oh, here. I thought you said regular. No, irregular. <laughs> oh no. It's okay.
you see you when do you see you raise your eyebrows? Do I? You're like, ooh. This always used to happen in school where like I can't tell I'm doing weird expressions, but if I was confused the teacher would be like, Melissa, why do you look confused? I'd be like, I'm not, I'm fine. <laughs> but I guess I can't lie. <laughs> I'm the same. It's like too expressive. Yeah. I didn't even feel my eyebrows moving when they moved.
exercise is just to maintain a smile to every organ that I'm touching just smile towards the organ like a smiling meditation where we send in gratitude and thanks to all of our organs that help us survive on a day-to-day -day basis and they do it without us even having to ask them to Inviting you to smile towards your heart. Maybe we can even say he's the emperor of organs. Helping us feel love and compassion towards people, things and life. Pumping blood throughout our body us warmth, feeding every cell. I 
representing the fire element, so feeling warmth just spread throughout your body when you think of fire. It's almost like when you're sitting in front of a fire or a campfire. Just breathing that cozy feeling. Now we're moving over to the spleen, the stomach and the pancreas, the little trio. And we're just going to smile at all these organs as they serve functions in our lives. And when we think of these colours, we're thinking yellow, like the bright sun. We're thinking of earth deep, earthy, rooted ground where we get all our food sources from, like potatoes, root vegetables that add nourishment into our lives. That's what these organs provide to us, nourishment and grounding. Now we've moved on to your kidneys, but I'm doing one at a time because they're two. In kidneys we think of the colour blue and the element of water. So we're thinking about cooling, flowing, being in harmony. And a good word that comes to me is gentle. So I'm going to invite you to smile towards your kidney. And in Chinese medicine, the kidneys are representative of our powerhouse of energy. So when we do too much or we drink too little water, we feel it's in our back. We don't feel like we're in flow. And as we do unto one, we do unto the other. Even visualizing like a little stream trickling. 
watery water just trickling past. Then we move on lastly to our liver. When I think of liver, I think of the spring. Where the leaves are just starting to sprout on the tree. of the colour green. And our liver is a very powerful organ that can store a lot of toxins in our body. So that's why it's very easily to get angry when your toxins in your liver are full. Cleaning your body, cleaning your liver helps improve chances of feeling angry, feeling less angry, feeling more in harmony, feeling calm. very easy in this day to day to find things that trigger us. That's why we like to smile to the liver all the time. Just remembering to convert energy into positive energy. going to do today, we're well, just going to take your hands and place them on the dentin, just for a few minutes. Just encouraging you to envision healing light energy. Sending through the palms of your hands, radiating into your body. And almost like putting petrol into a car, it's just putting light energy into your body. And if there's any parts that you feel need healing, just tell your brain to send it. Clever
comfortable, you can put your hands back at your side. Sort of as a marker that we've drawn close to this meditation. I'm just going to close the session down with a few minutes of sound.
just take a couple of minutes just to embody the sounds and the treatment. So inviting you back into your body. Just taking breaths in through the nose, nice and gentle. Breathe in through the belly. And slow exhales out. just through that awareness, just feeling how your belly rises and falls. And slowly moving your fingers, your toes. And slightly moving your legs and your arms. Maybe wriggling your spine. Turning your head left and right. Maybe stretch or even yawn. Feel safe to do so slowly, open your eyes very, very slowly because the light's on, but normally they're not. Just welcoming yourself back into the room, tying back into the theme of self acceptance of being here in the now without judgment. Just feeling comfortable to be you. And we just finalize that with a smile. And that's the session for today, lovely. Thank you. It's a journey, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh gosh. So we're trying to like come back. <laughs> Just take yeah. your time. Yeah. You're good if you need to relax a few minutes. I normally Thank let you. people too. Thank you. It's so weird. It's like I wasn't sleeping, but I feel so rested. Mm. Like a really deep state of like relaxation. Mm. It's because you allowed me to go there with your energy, so I could take you, take you there. That's why I was coming up with the topic last week about trust. If you trust your mm -hmm. practitioner, you can just open up, and then you can really do a lot deeper work. Mm -hmm. And that's probably why when they say to do multiple sessions of this, it just goes so much deeper. Yeah, I guess if the first few were nervous and stuff. Hmm. It's the same like you picked up someone touching your belly, your armpit, and you're like, what is going to happen? <laughs> what am I to expect? So yeah. I say after these sessions, you'll probably have the deepest sleep of your life. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, uh, you can expect different bowel movements. Sometimes you can have more to release. Um, Generally, the feeling, especially from tomorrow, you just feel a bit lighter and a little bit different, more uplifted and positive. And if there's any hidden emotions that would creep to the surface, do process them. Because I always say with work as powerful as this, the integration is the most key and crucial part of the work. Just allowing yourself to feel and embody because if we have any hidden, let's call them negative emotions, deep-rooted, they need to come out mm -hmm. for you to feel better and lighter okay. and increase your frequency. So if you ever feel the urge to cry, cry or shake 
or if you have anger, you need to go do some boxing or something, or scream into a pillow. Okay. Under which it would be. Mm -hmm. If you do, it doesn't necessarily happen um, with everyone. But mm -hmm. I mean, working with you, you're not. You don't have any critical issues mm -hmm. or traumas or deep-rooted, hidden things that are lurking beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. So it's good because it in a sense for your work, then it can just help you just achieve different things faster rather than having to constantly process, process, process. Mm. So your journey is very different to, you know, sort of my common person I work mm. with, which is also a good thing. Mm. It's better to be this, right? Yeah. Because everyone's trying to get to where you are. Oh. <laughs> uh, good. Yeah. Mm. Good place, most, mostly. Mm. Yeah. And it's good you choose, and whether it's conscious or unconscious, you know, it's sort of this work that you're doing, mm. just constantly receiving, receiving, receiving. Yeah. It's going to be yeah, like, a, lucky. yeah, it's going to be a super machine, you know. Honestly. Yeah, it's weird because I feel like at the start I was a lot more tired, but somehow I guess doing a lot of the sessions, like I seem to have so much more energy from it. Mm. It's like a different reserve of energy. Mm. Of, it's not what it picked up from your organs. It's not mm. deep-rooted stuff. It's just sort of like temporary, you know, like mm. you said, you've overeaten. Mm. Your body's full with lots of food. Mm. You've been doing a lot more, so you're a bit tired, right? But you're not exhausted and adrenally fatigued, you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> you're not like on minus, minus. Yeah, it's a bit more scary if that comes up.